In a previous video, I tested hand sanitizer and hand washing with soap and water just to kind of compare and to see how effective those methods actually are at cleanliness. And I actually use the same soap you see sitting here. And I also use the same nutrient agar plates you see sitting over here. I'm going to talk about those in just a second. Uh, so in that first video, I actually touched one of the agar plates before I washed my hands just to see how uh, dirty they actually are before anything else is done with them as a kind of a control. I'm not going to do that in this video because I only have five agar plates here and I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do with those in a minute. But if you want to kind of see uh, how dirty your hands actually are before you wash them, uh, go ahead and watch the first video. It's going to be linked up here or at the end of the video or in the video description. Uh, so what I do in my daily life is I try to save money. I, I mean, don't we all try to do that? But this is a refill bottle for liquid hand soap. This is two or three bucks. I think I got it from Walmart. Um, very cheap. And this whole thing uh, will last about a year, a little over a year, from refilling the uh, three main used soap containers, soap dispensers that we use all, all the time, uh, multiple times a day. So what I actually do is I take a little bit of this liquid hand soap. This is meant to be used straight, by the way. This is not meant for refilling soap foamers, which is what this is. So I'll take about one to two ounces, fill it in the bottom of this, and fill the rest with cold water, and just kind of stir it up a little bit. And then now I have liquid uh, soap that's a soap foamer. You couldn't do that if you just pour straight soap in there. So what I found is that it didn't seem like the, uh, the washing my hands in the first video really did a very good job at getting rid of a lot of germs. Now, I understand uh, cleanliness and san sanitizing things doesn't mean sterile, so you're always going to have some amount of germs, and they're not all necessarily bad. But what I want to know is if I use straight liquid hand soap, uh, instead of watering it down like this with the soap foamer, if it's going to be more effective. So what I'm going to do to start this is I'm going to wash my hands first with some dish soap. As we all know, dish soap is pretty powerful stuff. And then I'm going to uh, basically dirty up my hands after that, touch things around the house, uh, floors, walls in the bathroom, stuff like that. And I'm going to touch an agar plate. After I wash my hands with this one or this one, it doesn't really matter which order I'm doing it in. Then I'm going to do that process over again with another set of plates, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with this and then go with this, so that way we kind of have an overlap as a, as a form of control. I'm also going to be taking the fifth agar plate and leaving that open on the countertop uh, while I am doing all of this other stuff just to have a control to show how much might have collected from the air just so we can get a better uh, idea of the hands, if the hands are actually dirty or if the plate's becoming contaminated when I open it. Uh, I know for certain that that's, that's not the case. Uh, I've done this several times, but just to kind of please the crowd, that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's get busy. All right, so here's all the samples, and I gotta say that I don't think I've ever washed my hands this many times in such a short amount of time, so I'm gonna need some hand lotion for sure after this. 
But anyways, here's a timeline as it sits, just to kind of describe what we did here, just because I didn't show everything on camera. Before we did the first two dishes here, I washed my hands with uh, liquid dish soap, and then I left them slightly moist. I went around the house and the uh, floors, countertops, toilet seats, floor in the bathroom, shower walls and tub, touched all that in the exact same fashion, and then I went back and washed my hands with the uh, foam soap and touched this, and I also left the control open in the same exact location just to make sure that the contamination rate will show up here. Then what I did is I washed my hands again with the liquid dish soap and went back to the exact same routine in the exact same fashion and then came back and washed my hands with the straight liquid soap, which is basically just the straight version of the watered down version of the foam soap. Followed the exact same routine again, came back and I did the exact same thing in this order, foam and then straight liquid soap, but I also added in where I dried my hands with a paper towel in both cases before I touched these. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put these in my incubator, which is right over here. I have an inline thermostat. I have a heat mat, and this is just a box where there's a rack in it. So if you're interested in doing this experiment yourself or messing with some Petri dishes, these are actually safe to use. Um, you still got to follow you know, some safety protocol, but these are the safest form of Petri dishes you can actually use. So if you're interested in the Petri dishes, the inline thermostat, any of that stuff, I'm going to leave links in the video description below. Uh, and then you can have at it yourself if you'd like to try this experiment. Those will be affi uh, affiliate links, so I will receive a small commission if you use those links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. All right, it's been four days, and let's have a look at the results. And here they are. So I think the results here are pretty straightforward, but I'm going to take a closer look at these with you. Uh, first off, here's the control. There is absolutely nothing on there, and you're just seeing a little bit of condensation on there. Nothing on the dish whatsoever. So that shows you that there's no contamination from the air just as we were opening them and using them. Uh, over here on this side, here is where we basically just, we didn't dry our hands before we touched them. Uh, we just kind of shook them off and air dried them a little bit. So my hands were still wet a little bit when I touched these. Uh, the foam soap and straight liquid soap, and the foam soap is just a watered down version of the straight soap. And then over here is the exact same thing. The only difference is, is I dried my hands with paper towel before I touched these. Now looking over here at the foam soap and the straight liquid soap, I know it looks like there might be a little bit of a difference. And if you look really closely here, the colonies here, it doesn't really appear that there's much more, but it looks like they are changing color for some reason. Uh, it doesn't really seem like a different type of yeast or bacteria. It just looks like the colors are shifting. Because I looked at this uh, two days ago and it didn't have that yellow color. So over here you don't really see that. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to organisms, but you can clearly see here that there's obviously not a big difference. Over here on this side, you can see that these are pretty much identical uh, with the amount of colonies and the types of colonies that are growing in there. So you can see there's some different colors here and there. And the reason why this has less on it uh, is because if you, you have to think about water as like a, a conduit for transferring stuff. So if, imagine if you drop something on the floor. If you drop something on the floor that was like wet, I don't know, maybe say you're eating an apple and it went face down on the floor like that. You, th you think you're going to pick that apple up, turn it over, and then eat it? Probably not. But if you drop something on the floor that was dry, maybe a flake of a cereal or something, I, I think a lot of people would probably just eat it as long as you know the floors were relatively clean and not in some public place. But anyways, that's what you're seeing here uh, is because when the hands were more dry, there was less transfer of bacteria. And this is kind of the same concept. So anyways, what we're going to do now is I'm going to do one more test because all this was being used for tap water from my faucet, uh, from straight from the tap. And even though it was hot water, and uh, even though my water is chlorinated before it goes through my carbon filtration system, my water is basically triple filtered. There could still be organisms in the water as I've tested before. Certainly not this much, but we're going to test that just to make sure. I'm going to take this control dish where it's not contaminated. I'm going to wash my hands again. Uh, with just my foam soap, this one over here where I did this test, and I'm going to rinse my hands with boiled water, water that's just poured over my hands, put, boiled straight from the pot, because I know that that doesn't have any bacteria in it. And if you're asking, uh, I should test the soaps. Well, I've already done this. I've tested the straight liquid soap and the, fo the soap that's in the uh, foamer. Uh, I cultured them, uh, well, I should say I swabbed them, and there was no bacteria that grew in the dishes whatsoever with those. So I know the soap is not contaminated. So let's get on with the last part of this experiment. Okay, I have my assistant here. This is the pot of boiled water I was talking about. This has been boiled for 10 minutes. I'm just gonna wash my hands normally and then we're gonna dump that over my hands. Dump a little bit on my hands. 
Not too much. Good, good, okay. I'll make sure that I wash them for the you know, full 20 seconds or whatever. I'm not even counting, I'm just guessing. Wash my fingertips and thumbnails really good. Are you counting? No. Okay, well, it's, it's, this, this seems like an obsessive wash right here. <laughs> like, this is not how anybody washes their hands unless you're a doctor preparing for surgery or something. Like, dump a little bit on my hands, a little bit. That's not, that's too much. <laughs> that was just supposed to be a little bit. Okay, and I slowly trickle it over my hands like it, like it's coming out of the faucet. Slowly. I want to make sure they're rinsed off really good. So I feel my fingers are really rough. Sorry. Wait for a little faster. A little faster, a little faster, a little faster. Okay, that's enough. Set that down over there. Go ahead and open that. Just put it on the counter. Okay. Okay, and now that's going in the incubator. All right, it has been four more days since I've washed my hands with a foam soap again and then rinse and wash them with the boiled water, and these are the results. Now you can clearly see here there's not a whole lot of difference versus the other part of this video with the other petri dishes. The only difference I can really note here is the fact that there doesn't seem to be a wide variety of things growing on here. It mainly is just two different types of organisms. We got these white specks and then this brown blob and there's a little brown blob over there too. Uh, so the other petri dishes seem to have a little bit more variety growing on there. So let's talk about this for a second. Um, it doesn't seem to matter what you wash your hands with. Any kind of soap, uh, whether it's antimicrobial or whatever, uh, it's not going to get everything off your hands. There's always going to be something on your hands. It doesn't matter whether it's good or bad bacteria. You have to remember that uh, washing your hands with soap or whatever it might be, or hand wipes, what it is killing on your hands, as far as microbes go, is not selective. So it's going to be killing the good and the bad. And just because this shows here, these maybe this type isn't harmful, uh, that doesn't mean that there's not harmful types of bacteria left in your hands after you wash them. Uh, just remember, I've tested boiled water several times, nothing grows in it. I've tested the soap itself, nothing grows in it. And I've done this uh, more than once. This experiment's done probably, the, this is probably the fourth time I've actually done this, uh, two on camera actually. And I've got basically the same results every single time. So if you want to do this experiment yourself, uh, whether your hands are wet or dry, you're going to see something on a petri dish, I guarantee it. So that's it for this video. Uh, there will be other videos probably coming up with uh, more petri dishes. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching.